I want to stress that we recognize that there is a predator at large in our community. I want the community to know that we are doing everything within our power to apprehend that individual and we are committed to doing everything within our power to keep our community and especially our children, our most precious commodity safe. Westminster, Colorado is a beautiful suburb nine miles northwest of Denver with a population of just over 100,000 people. It's the kind of place where you feel safe, slightly away from the city, and settle down to raise a family. Jessica Christine Ridgway was born on January 23, 2002. Her parents, Jeremiah Bryant and Sarah Ridgway, did not stay together, but they maintained a fairly good relationship. She lived in a modest home with her mother, aunt, and grandmother. People who knew Jessica described the 10-year-old as a very mature, happy little girl who made good grades, loved to make up dances, dress up in costumes, and loved animals. Her favorite color was purple. Her teachers and classmates described her as bubbly, kind, and well-liked by everyone. In stark contrast, when Austin Sig was 12, barely older than Jessica, he was into child pornography. His stepmother sent him to a counselor, which he admitted didn't help. His obsession with pornography grew darker, and soon he was watching violent child pornography and snuff films. He also became fascinated with mortuary science. Like many people who lived in the area probably do, I remember October 5th, 2012 very well. We only lived a few miles away from where the Ridgeways lived. I too, along with many other parents, sent my kids out the door to walk to school that day. The day started like any other day for Jessica and her mother, Sarah. Jessica followed her usual routine of waking up to her alarm at 7.45 a.m. Her mother worked the night shift from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and would usually go to sleep after Jessica left for school. She was supposed to meet a classmate to walk to school with down the street. She spoke to the boy's father at 8.25 a.m. to let him know she would be there shortly. She was wearing a black puffy jacket, boots with pom-poms on them, her black and pink backpack, and her purple glasses. Her mother watched her walk out the door at around 8.30. She had an extremely short distance to walk to the boys' home, about a thousand feet. There was a light snow that morning and Jessica was picking up the snow and making snowballs as she walked down the street towards her friend's house. Meanwhile, Jessica's classmate and his father waited for her to arrive, but she never did. Around 8.40, they left to go to school, as school started at 8.50. In May 2012, four months before Jessica was kidnapped, a 22-year-old woman was jogging around Kettner Lake. The lake is only half a mile from Jessica's house. As she jogged around the trail, a man ran up behind her and placed a cloth over her face. She reported to police that the cloth smelled like chemicals. Luckily, she was able to fight him off and get away. Westminster PD was able to obtain some DNA from the assault on the jogger. A sketch was released to the public of her attacker. When Jessica didn't show up to school at Witt Elementary, they tried to call her mother Sarah around 10 a.m. Sarah was asleep and had placed her cell phone in the other room. Her aunt and grandmother were at work. The school's call went to voicemail. Sarah Ridgway woke up around 4 p.m. and heard the message from the school. She jumped in her car and went looking for Jessica along her normal route, stopping at the park, her friend's house, and finally the school, but there was no sign of her. 
Sarah Ridgway was quoted in an interview as saying, and then you get a pit in your stomach. You don't want any parent to experience in their entire life when you know your child has been taken. Jessica's mother then called the police to report Jessica missing around 4.30. Officers responded and began canvassing the neighborhood and searching around the park and Jessica's school. They questioned the school staff and went door to door looking for her. Firefighters and more officers began gathering as the search intensified. Volunteers also started arriving to help look for Jessica. By 9.15 p.m., all of the criteria was met to issue an Amber Alert. The search continued into the night as word spread on social media and more people came out to look for her. At 2 a.m., police called off the search until the next day. Saturday morning, almost a thousand people showed up to help search for Jessica in what became one of the largest searches in Colorado history. Police sent divers into nearby Kettner Lake to search for her. They had a helicopter and dogs from a local search and rescue team. They made door-to-door -door contact with all of the residents in the neighborhood, even getting permission to go through their homes and yards. The search continued throughout the night. Uh, well, you know, maybe they made a mistake and she's at the park playing with her friend. So I pass the park and, you know, you have that little bit of hope. Then I go to her friends and her friend's not answering and you kind of lose a little more hope. You go to the school and you know, then nobody, you know, had seen her and you lost a little bit more hope. And you go to her friend's house and still you don't hear anything. And then you get the pit in your stomach that you don't want any, any parent, any parent to, to ever experience it in their whole entire life. That you know your child has just been taken. It is not ever, ever anything I want ever any parent to go through. It is by far the worst thing I've ever been through. It still is. On Sunday, October 7th, six miles away in Superior, Colorado, a man noticed a backpack in his yard. He posted about it on a local page and mentioned that it had a water bottle and a keychain with the name Jessica Ridgway. Someone told him the significance of her name and he immediately called the police. When investigators opened the backpack, they found urine-soaked clothes and Jessica's purple glasses. Police filled the area and began going door to door and questioning if anyone saw anything. Finally, they got their first break in the case. There was DNA left on the backpack. The DNA matched that taken from the attack of the woman on Kettner Lake. On October 10th, maintenance workers were picking up trash at Patridge Park Open Space in Arvada, Colorado. The park is nine miles away from Jessica's home. Workers found a large trash bag that seemed odd to them. They opened it and saw a human torso missing the head and limbs. The gruesome scene found overnight just off this roadside in a remote Arvada, Colorado park. This afternoon, a body was discovered. Investigators worked under the floodlights of a fire truck, finally carrying the body out around 9 p.m. The Arvada Police Department and the Westminster Police Department are working jointly with additional resources to process that crime scene. Police haven't officially identified the body, but sources tell ABC News it is the missing 10-year-old. FBI and police swarmed the park and closed off the roads in the area. They brought in lights and a fireman's ladder to help process the scene. They refused to say if the body was Jessica's, but everyone assumed that it was. The torso had been wiped clean. It was missing the arms, legs, and the head. Everyone waited anxiously to hear the news. The next day, investigators made an emotional announcement. A great deal of sorrow in my heart. 
I regret to inform you that the body that was found in Arvada has been positively identified as Jessica Ridgeway, the missing girl from Westminster. The family has been notified. We can't begin to comprehend the grief that they're going through. I want the family to know, for me and every single person involved in this case, that our thoughts and prayers go out to them and they've been in our hearts from the beginning. In the community, there was an overwhelming sense of sadness, horror, and anger. I remember going to pick up my kids from school, seeing crowds of parents who had taken off work early, waiting to pick up their kids instead of letting them walk home as usual. Investigators worked around the clock, taking thousands of tips from all over the country. They also took voluntary DNA swabs from 700 local residents. On October 16th, over 2,000 people came to Jessica Ridgway's funeral. Colorado Governor Hickenlooper wore a purple shirt and spoke at her service, saying he was there to express the heart and love of the entire state of Colorado. Investigators have been very tight-lipped on the investigation. The first time they released anything to the public of significance was October 19th. Westminster police disclosed to the public that they had recovered a one-inch wooden cross during the investigation. They would not give any more details at that time. They urged anyone that recognized the cross to come forward. They went on further to say that the cross might become pivotal in the investigation to Jessica Ridgway's murder. Their strategy worked, and a woman called investigators saying that the cross was similar to one that her friend, Mindy Sig's son, wore. Police went to interview Austin Sig at his home, just a little more than a mile away from Jessica's house. He calmly answered their questions and told them that he was sleeping when Jessica disappeared. He agreed to give the police a cheek swab for DNA. On October 22nd, police told the public that they had made a connection between the attack on the woman at Kettner Lake and Jessica Ridgeway. Austin was certain that they had matched his DNA and he started to panic. He told fellow students at Arapahoe Community College that day that he felt sick and wobbly. What Austin didn't know is that there had been a mistake at the lab. His DNA had mistakenly been put with the samples that were cleared. Austin reportedly slept in bed with his mother the night of October 22nd. The next day, he told her that he had something important to tell her. She reportedly asked if it had something to do with Jessica. The following is the 911 call made by Mindy Sig to Westminster PD on October 23rd. This is Molly. Okay. Hey, Molly. I'm trans this is Rhoda. I'm transiting a phone call in to you, okay? Okay. Okay, hopefully it went. Do I hang up? Hello? Hi, this is Molly at Westminster Police. Can I help you? Hi, um, I need you to come to my house. Um, my son wants to turn himself in for the Jessica Ridgeway murder. Okay, what's the address? 10622 West 102nd Avenue. And what's going on there? Now, I'm not hearing me. He just confessed to killing her. I know. I, w I want you to tell me what's going on. Can you tell me exactly what he said? That he did it, and he gave me details, and her remains are in my house. Did you see them? No. Is he there with you? Yes. Is he cooperative? Yes. How old is your son? 17. Hold on one second. What is your son's name? Austin Sig. Can you spell it? You said Austin? Mm hmm. Okay, and spell his last name for me. S is in Sam, I G G. Okay, I understand that you're probably, you know, feeling pretty crappy right now, but I want you to know that you did the right thing. 
by oh, calling. He, he, he did it. He just wanted me to call. He, he is turning himself in. Okay. Do you think that he's going to be cooperative with the officers? Absolutely. Okay. And you, I just want to verify you're at 10622102 Avenue. Yeah. Do you think that Austin would talk to me? Will you talk to him? Yeah, hold on. Okay. Hello? Is this Austin? Yes, it is. Hi, Austin. This is Molly at the Westminster Police Department. Hi. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on right now or how you're feeling or, or how did this come about? Uh, I, I, I don't exactly get why you're asking these questions. I murdered Jessica Ridgeway. Okay. There is, I have proof that I did it. I, there is no other question. You just have to send a squad car something down here, and right. I will answer all the questions that you want to ask okay. or anyone wants to ask of me as soon as you just you got to get down here. Okay. Austin, I have a police officer that's going to come over to your house, okay? Can you tell me what part of the house that her remains are in? Underneath the house and across this. Okay. Did you know Jessica before this? No, I did not. Are you going to school anywhere? We're at the Hope Community College. And you're 17? Yes. Okay, Austin, can you tell me your date of birth? January 17th to 1995. Okay, I want, I want you to know that you did the right thing, okay? And I do have a police officer that's on the way to talk to you. Okay. Do you have any weapons in your house? I do, but I plan to use absolutely none of them. I will be sitting in my front room when the police officer, uh, or I'll be right next to my mother. I have knives in my room, um, and we own a few guns, but I'm, okay. I'm giving myself up completely. There will be no resistance whatsoever. Okay. Have you committed any crimes like this before? Just the first? Um, I mean, are, do you have a criminal history of any sort? The only other thing that I have done that before this was the Kettner Lake incident where the woman got attacked. That was me as well. And other than that, the only criminal history I have is a speeding ticket. Okay. Do you have a car? I do. What kind of vehicle do you have? Jeep Grand Cherokee. What color is it? Golden. Is it at your house? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, Austin. Well, like you I said the police. You, uh, no, well, just like I said, I am sending you a police officer, okay? But, yeah. but you have to understand that, that you know, we, we take this stuff very seriously. And like I said, you did the right thing by calling. I would, I would have to hope that you would take this serious because this is important. I am I'm, I'm over here. Please. I absolutely am taking this seriously. Can you, can you please hurry up? I need to call his dad. Please, well, on my phone. Ma'am, um, I understand <laughs> you want to call your, I understand you want to call your husband and I'm sorry, but I would like to keep you guys on the phone just until the officers get a little bit closer. Well, how far are they? Um, they're going to be there in just a few minutes. Okay, they're they're going to be there in just a few minutes. Can you? Can I get? Right, a, yeah, we can stay on the line, but do you have to keep asking questions? Okay, no, I don't. I don't. Can mom? Can I just get your name? My name is Mindy. And Mindy, do you have the same last name? Yeah. Okay. And what is your home phone number? I just have a cell phone. It's 303-260-9756. 303-260-9756? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you guys did the right thing by calling, okay? The officers are almost there. I... 
I won't ask you any more questions. Thank you. Okay. But like I said, I just I just need to keep you on the phone so we can have you guys come to the door when I tell you. All right. Okay. And I'm going to ask you just to keep me on the phone. When I tell you to go to the front door, you and Austin go to the front door. The officers, you know, the officers are going to be very, be very careful. And they're going to work with you to, to take care of you and to take care of Austin, but as well as their officer safety, okay? No, I know. Can I, does, does your husband live there with you? It's my ex-husband. He lives in Parker. He lives in Parker. Okay. Is Austin still there with you? Mm hmm Yeah, I won't let him on my site. Okay. Where are you guys at in the house? In my room. Okay. Has Austin been diagnosed with any mental health um, mental health issues? Does he see a counselor or take any medication? He saw a counselor um, years ago okay. for um, porn. Okay. And we were talking, and we think that might have led to it, but I don't know. And what? I don't know. Okay. I can't breathe. Take some deep breaths for me. Do you want me to start you an ambulance? No. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, what just happened? I opened the window. What's that? I just opened the window. Okay. I need air. Okay. Mindy, are you sure you don't need an ambulance? I'm, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. okay. Take, take some deep breaths for me, okay? Mm hmm Okay, and you, you know, you, you understand that I am taking you seriously, correct? I would hope so, yes. Okay, well, I definitely, I definitely am taking you serious, okay? Like I explained, like I explained several times, we're going to, you know, I have officers on the way. They've been on the way since you called. Okay, and, and due to the serious nature of this incident, like I said, we're just gonna we're just gonna make sure, you know, that that we get this taken care of the right way. We're not we're not gonna hurt you, we're not gonna hurt Austin. All right, we're going downstairs to get some water. You're going downstairs? Is that the main level? Yeah. Okay, and Austin's going with you? Yeah. Okay. Get a bottle of water, Austin. Okay. And Austin told me he's going to, he's taking, like, classes at community college? Yeah. Okay, oh, what kind of classes is he taking? <laughs> to be a mortician. He wants to be a mortician? Okay. All right, Mindy. You said your husband, your ex-husband was in Parker? Yeah. Okay. Hold on for me just one second, okay? Okay. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. I'm watching what mom is typing in. Is there anybody else in your house? No, I had my sister come over okay. and get my younger son. Okay, so he, so your younger son's gone right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it's and it's just you and Austin there. Yeah. Okay, and are there any dogs in your house? You know, just cats. Okay, and do you have the front door unlocked? Is the front door unlocked? Oh. Probably how it is. Mindy, I just I just want you to answer this. Do you want do you want an officer to knock and meet you at the front door, or do you want them to come in, or would you like to step outside? I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna open the door right now. You're gonna open the front door right now. Yeah. Okay. They're they're not quite there yet. Yeah, they're not here yet. Okay. And I I want Can you. To can you hold on one second? It's my sister. Can I can I tell you one thing really quick? The officers yeah. that are coming to your house are not going to be in uniform. 
They're in plain clothes, but they have badges. Okay. Okay. So you can be the FBI. Um, it's it's not the FBI, but it's some of our plain clothes officers here at Westminster. Okay. Okay. So it's. It's not it's not an FBI agent, but it's a plain clothes officer from like Westminster. To see no. Okay. The stairs right here. Here's the You're what? We're gonna sit on the stairs. You're sitting on the stairs? Yeah. Can I answer the other line? Okay. If you feel that you need to do that. Okay, if I hang up, you can call me back because I'm not sure I know how to use call waiting. Okay, well, would you feel comfortable? Do you have another phone that you can talk to your sister? Um, this one, me can answer it because she has my other son, okay? Okay. Okay, hold on. You're sitting on the inside Hello? Hello? I'm still here with you. Okay. Mindy, oh. is, is yeah. Austin a white male? Yes. Okay, what color shirt is he wearing? I don't know. What color is this? Gray? Gray, stripe, light gray and dark gray, stripes, horizontal. Okay. And hold on one second, okay? Do I have an officer on scene? <laughs> Mindy, take a couple deep breaths for me, okay? Yeah. Is Austin still there with you? No, I'm hugging him. Okay, you guys are hugging? <laughs> okay, you you definitely did the right thing. You told me when the officers get there, they're coming to your front door. Okay? I don't see them. I don't see them yet. You don't see them? No. And you're at the front door? Yeah. Okay, they're they're on their way, and like I said, they're plain clothes Westminster officers. There's nobody here. <laughs> and Mindy, I want to say one more time: one hundred six two two West one hundred two Avenue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are you still at the front door? Yeah. Okay. They're they're walking up to your house. Okay. They. For their for their safety reasons, they park down the street and they're walking up. Okay. Okay. And like I said, they're going to be plain clothes. They're not FBI. Okay. They're Westminster police officers, and they're coming to help you. We're going to get this all sorted out. Okay. I don't see them. You what? I don't see them. You don't see them yet. No. Do you have a front porch light on or anything that I could make sure that they go to? Yeah. Your front porch yeah. light is on? Sorry, what, Austin? What do you say? Okay. Are you still with Austin? Yeah. Okay. What is... I know. I know. Are you with the officers or what just... What? No, they're not here. Okay. Is Austin still calm? Is how is his demeanor no, right now? To hurry up. I'm trying to get them to hurry, okay? Like I said, we we're getting officers there as quickly as we can. Is Austin okay with you right now? Yeah, he's just getting really anxious and oh. so am I. Okay. Click me again. <laughs> Oh. They're yeah, here. They're coming up. They're coming up to the door. Yeah. Okay. Do you see? Do you see the plainclothes officers and their badges? Yeah, they're here. Okay, I'll let you go speak with them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 Investigators interviewed Austin Sig and began to piece together the horrific details of what happened to Jessica on the morning of October 5th. As Jessica walked to school that morning, Austin was hiding in the back seat of his Jeep. He knew she would have to pass him as he crossed the street. As she crossed in front of him, he leapt out of the car and grabbed her. She screamed, but no one heard her. He used zip ties to restrain her wrists and ankles. He drove away, making random turns, and eventually drove to his house. 
Jessica was scared and confused and she wet herself. She kept asking him if he knew her mom. Austin says they watched TV for a while, but there's no way to confirm that. He then sexually assaulted her. Afterwards, he cut her hair and gave her different clothes to change into. He had her put her urine-soaked clothes in her backpack. He then asked her to turn away from him and tried to strangle her with a zip tie, but it broke. He manually strangled her for three minutes. He noticed she was still alive, so he took her to the bathroom, forcing her face down into a bathtub full of scalding hot water, drowning her. After he killed her, he used a saw and a small knife to begin dismembering her. He first removed her hands and feet. He cut them into smaller pieces and flushed them down the toilet. He removed her arms, legs, and head. He labeled some of her organs. He kept her skull and her organs under his house in a pool shed. He cleaned her torso and put it in garbage bags. The small wooden cross that investigators had indicated was so important to the investigation was placed in her vagina. When Austin heard that the police were using bloodhounds, he drove Jessica's backpack out to Superior. He then drove her torso out to Patridge Park open space in Arvada and set it near the abandoned mining shack where it was found. Austin Sig was charged with 19 counts, including first degree murder after deliberation, three counts of felony murder, sexual assault on a child, and second degree kidnapping and robbery. Since Austin had not yet reached his 18th birthday, he was tried in juvenile court. He was not eligible for the death penalty. He pled guilty to all charges. Jessica's family and friends wore her favorite color, purple, to the sentencing hearing. Austin's mother also wore purple and sobbed uncontrollably through the proceedings. Due to United States Supreme Court law, minors cannot get life in prison. The defense argued that Austin was not matured and therefore didn't fully understand his actions. The judge disagreed. On November 20th, 2013, Austin Sig was sentenced to 40 years. The judge added another 86 years for other charges to make sure that he never would see the outside of a prison until he died. The murder of Jessica Ridgway shocked and devastated the state of Colorado. It also brought the community closer together. Her family hopes that Jessica will not be remembered for the way she died, but for how she lived. On October 5th, 2013, on the one year anniversary of Jessica's murder, the city of Westminster, Colorado partnered with the community and changed the name of Jessica's favorite park near her home to the Jessica Ridgway Memorial Park. The park has a playground, features knock-knock jokes that Jessica loved, and has a custom-designed purple ribbon swing set.